Hey there, Python trainer Ruben Lerner here. And today I want to show you how you can select particular columns and rows from your data frame in Pandas. So I'm going to first load up Pandas here, import Pandas as PD, and I'm going to use one of my favorite files, uh, about 10,000 taxi rides from New York. I'm going to say df equal PD read CSV from file name. Now if I look at df head, so I've got a whole bunch of columns here. I have the vendor ID. This is each row here is one trip in a New York City taxi from about, uh, what was it, six years ago, seven years ago, from 2015. I have only 10,000 of these. So vendor ID, pickup date time, drop off date time, passenger count, trip distance, pickup latitude, uh, longitude, latitude, rate code ID, store and forward flag. In fact, if I look at df.columns, we'll see a whole bunch of different columns that have sort of scrolled off the edge here. Drop off, longitude, latitude, payment type, fair amount, and so on and so forth. So if I want to retrieve uh, selected columns, I can do that with square brackets, right? I can just say df of, and here I can use one set of square brackets, say that I want one column. So I'll say here, passenger count. Okay, and that's done. And now I have only the passenger count uh, column from here. But what if I want two columns or more? Then I can put a list of columns list of strings inside of the square brackets. And yes, that means nested square brackets. So I'm going to say here df of square brackets, and I'm going to have extra square brackets of passenger count and total amount, and I would say trip distance. And now I'm going to get back a data frame, a data frame because I've asked for three columns from df. So it's a smaller data frame, a narrower data frame, because I only have three of the columns, but I have all the rows. Well, there is another way for me to do this. I can also use the filter method to indicate which of the columns I want to retrieve. So for example, I can say here df.filter, and then I pass a list. I'll say your passenger count and total amount and trip distance. Now there's nothing wrong per se with using filter like this, but this is kind of a silly use of filter because filter can do so much more. So what if I want all of the columns that have amount in their names? Huh, well, that's getting a little harder, right? So I can say, like, for example, one column for one column in the F columns if amount in one column. So what am I doing here? I'm creating a list based on a list comprehension. And I say, let's go through each column. If it has the word amount in there, then I'll get them. I can say df uh, filter of this list. And it does work, but it's kind of, ugh, really? I have to use your list comprehension for that? No, I can use filter and the like keyword argument to it. So if I say here df filter, and then I say like equals amount, it's going to do exactly what I just did here. It's going to find all the columns where the name contains the string amount, the substring amount, and I get exactly the same thing back. Now, it's really important to understand here, I am not filtering based on the values in these columns. I'm filtering based on the name of the column. Okay, so I could do that. Um, and I can search for all sorts of things, right? So I can say df filter of like equals, let's say, drop off. Or I can say, and here we have drop off daytime, longitude, and latitude. And I can say also pick up. Uh, but wait a second, what if I want, if I want all of the columns for both pick up and drop off? Huh, that's a little harder. Actually, it's not. We can use a regular expression. I can say here df filter, and then I'm going to say not like equals and not a list of strings. I'm going to say regex equals, and I put a regular expression. Now, if you don't know regular expressions, shame on you. No, if you don't know regular expressions, then, um, well, you should probably learn them at some point. You should just know they aren't as hard as people think to learn, really and truly. Um, so I can say here, let's do, let's do pick up, and I'll use vertical bar and drop off. And this basically means either pick up or drop off. And sure enough, I get all the columns there that have pick up or drop off. I can also say df filter, and I can say regex equals, and let's say here, dot star tude. And what is that going to mean? And I'll put a dollar at the end to say that's the end. 
So that means any column whose name ends with tude. It has a bad attitude. Well, no, not here. I pick up longitude, pick up latitude, drop up longitude, drop up latitude, and it works great. I love using array expressions to choose my columns here. One, I have a lot of columns that are named well and named similarly. If all the column names are sort of all over the map, well, it's not going to help anyone. Well, wait a second. What if, let's do this here. What if I say now, df, let's do a df head. And this particular uh, data frame doesn't really lend itself to, well, you know, let's do this. Let's say here, df equals df, set index to be tpep pickup daytime. I'm just going to do this. So let's set the index to be the pickup daytime. And note, this is a string. I have not turned it into a daytime object. So I'm going to say df head, and we're going to see it's right there. So now I want to find the rows that match a particular string, just as I did it for the columns. Well, how am I going to do that? Because if I say df filter, and I say, for example, I want 20 you know, like equals 2015-0602, it's going to look for all the columns that match that, and that will match no columns. I'm just going to get all these, <laughs> I'll get the index with zero columns attached. Yeah, that's not very helpful. So this is not what we want. But what I can do is I can take this and I can add the axis keyword argument, axis equals rows. And now it will do exactly that. And I get all the columns and all of the rows that match this name. Now the matching can be anywhere inside of there, right? So I can say DF filter like equals, and I can say it's like, you know, space 11 colon. And then it's going to find all of the row. Oh, sorry, I need to do that here. Access equals rows. And here I need to find all the rows, and it's going to find you know 11 colon this, 11 colon that. So it doesn't have to be at the beginning or the end, which you might sort of expect. And this is great for finding rows flexibly inside of your data frame. And of course, I don't have to use like. I can use instead regex. And I can do all sorts of crazy things here, right? I can say here, you know, backslash d, backslash d colon and then i can say like backslash d backslash d well that's not going to be a surprise because all of them have two numbers in a row and then two numbers in a row oh yeah well what if i say here i'm going to do this you know, a raw string just to make things less complex i'm going to put parentheses there and i'm going to say backslash one and now it's going to find oh then i should say here another colon backslash d, backslash d anything so it's going to find wherever the hour i guess i do a space there the same way so this means space two digits, a colon, and then the same two digits. And so now I'm going to have here, so 0, 0, 0, 0, 15, 15, 15, 15, and we got 304 rows that are like that. Now, this is probably not the way that you're going to want to look for dates, but, 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 I hope you understand that this is a great way to search for particular rows and, of course, for particular columns. I hope this was helpful and useful. Keep the questions coming about Python and Pandas. I love making videos and answering your questions. You can leave comments below, and I will see you back here soon with more videos about Python, Pandas, and everything in between. Thanks a lot.